neurological patients. So uh, now have been uh, ranked as nine as the uh, number nine uh, best hospital in in the world and the number one in Asia uh, because uh, fifty percent of the uh, of the score uh, belongs to uh, humanity. So that's why uh, the Tsuji Hospital is also well known in the world. And uh, here, the you see, we we have uh, lots of the uh, the the uh, blood uh, sent to uh, the wars and uh, uh, help uh, more than five thousand transplant for mono transplantations for uh, cancer patients here. The Pongnano uh, Pong Maro uh, Donor Registers is the uh, third largest one in the world. So uh, most of the Asia peoples can find their uh, HLA matched or model uh, for uh, for model transplant. Yeah. And the uh, also we uh, established a center. Uh, for stem cell and the precision medicines, and uh, now we uh, we are almost get approval uh, from uh, Taiwan uh, FDA to do uh, regenerative medicines uh, by using adipose tissue, adipose stem cell tissue, mesenchymal stem cell, fibroblasts, and the control site for uh, for like the neurological diseases, for uh, joint disease, for uh, skin disease, uh, etc. Also, uh, uh, get approval uh, to perform the uh, the uh, immune cell therapy, CD thirty four stem cell, the uh, and the uh, dendritic cell, the NK cell, etc. For the uh, terminal cancer patients, here a uh, pulmonary transplant by using uh, peripheral blood. Also. Uh, Get approval there, and the here we we are now almost allowed to do autologous for mono mesenchymal stem cell therapy for chronic ischemic stroke patient, chronic stroke patients, like the patient who suffered uh, stroke uh, nine years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. If uh, patient has the uh, hemiplegic limbs. Now we can uh, perform a, a pulmonary stem cell implantation into the directly into the brain, and uh, here we also uh, uh, get uh, almost get approval to do degenerative arthritis and cartilage deficit patient by using uh, patients on pulmonary mesenchymal stem cells, and the immunotherapy now we. Uh, we can perform the autologous NK cell transplantation for the uh, solid cancer patient, phase four cancer uh, patient, and also uh, gamma delta T cell transplantation for treating the solid cancer. And uh, uh, another is the combination therapies for the uh, uh, the like the dendritic cell, uh, NK cell, etc. And in our hospital, we we already uh, have uh, built uh, this uh, gene and stem cell uh, centers uh, at the uh, B1 uh, space here. So it's the uh, the FDA approved uh, place to make this uh, human great uh, stem cells for treating uh, diseases. Here the uh, so. Here, the, we start to perform this kind of the uh, uh, clinical practices in uh, in uh, uh, Hualien Hospital. And uh, here, I, I'd like to uh, start the uh, neurosurgical uh, disorders. In uh, uh, if the age over 40s, uh, usually uh, we can see the brain has. Uh, this kinds of the disease, uh, hydrocephalus, small vessel disease of brain, major vessel occlusion, Parkinson disease, and uh, somewhat brain uh, degenerations, and uh, uh, these may cause 
patient has the uh, deficit in memory. So uh, we call this the uh, sometimes the dementic or Alzheimer's disease. Small vessel disease occluding, uh, may cause the uh, a motor deficit, sensory defici deficit, and uh, uh, the uh, balance, uh, the uh, working balance deficit depends on the location of the uh, of, of the uh, vessel occluding. Major vessel, if occluded in the uh, carotid artery, may cause the uh, hemiplegic limbs. If in the posterior uh, circulations, may cause the uh, brainstem infarction, which may influence. Uh, may influence the uh, the speech, the swallowing, the gait, etc. Parkinson's disease also uh, affect the walking, mask face, uh, rigidity, slow in walking, etc. Uh, degenerative disease depends on the uh, on the uh, systems. Uh, degenerative, like uh, if it uh, cerebellar system, may cause the uh, imbalance. So the, uh, the symptoms of the hydrocephalus uh, include the personality change. If they, the, the, uh, 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 this it, it is related uh, to the uh, frontal lobe uh, dysfunction. No? So uh, patient become apathy. A patient uh, does not like to talk uh, and also as the uh, personality like uh, e easily uh, uh, to get uh, angry, uh, etc. Uh, unsteady uh, gait, also another symptoms. So, and the demented, and the usually in, in the night, uh, patient may have the urinary frequency, so frequently uh, wake up uh, and uh, need uh, for the urinations. Here, Parkinson's symptoms involve uh, the uh, tremor, rigidity, slow response, uh, unsteady gait, uh, the, the handwriting change, dystonia, mask face, etc. So, and the small vessel disease may cause the limb weakness, numbness, etc. And uh, the brain atrophy depends on the on which uh, systems of the brain uh, get atrophy. Here's the image. Here the dilated ventricle. Uh, you see there's a lots of the, the black dot, means the uh, breathers, small breathers uh, in, in the uh, cerebral blood vessels. And in, uh, in Huanian Hospital, we uh, usually perform uh, the MI of brain for patient, and the, the other uh, we call is show uh, the image uh, for patients. Here, we can uh, look at the uh, structures. She patient has the dilated ventricle, and whether has the, uh, he, this uh, white dot means a small vessel disease of brain. And here, uh, Chote image uh, is used to measure the uh, dopamine nerve systems. If the red color means uh, there's uh, lots of the uh, dopamine uh, nerve terminal here, so this is a normal image. Uh, uh, if it's become uh, the uh, green, uh, green uh, color means almost uh, all the uh, dopamine nerves disappeared. Means uh, this patient has the severe Parkinson's disease. And here we also uh, can see whether there's uh, any uh, atrophy, any kind of the atrophy of the brain, like uh, in the cortex, uh, cerebellum. Etc. So, uh, and if uh, after make the diagnosis, how uh, how uh, can we uh, help patients? Can we uh, treat uh, treat uh, the patients? If patient has a small vessel disease of brain, usually uh, like a low dose of aspirin uh, is uh, very effective uh, to uh, lower down their uh, their stroke uh, rate. Perfix also another choice. Parkinson disease, uh, uh, the uh, Parkinson medication uh, is very useful, like the uh, Matopa, uh, the uh, Rasakini, etc., uh, can, uh, can uh, elevate the uh, uh, patient's uh, dopamine, brain dopamine levels. So, uh, pa patient 
can have the energy, can have the ability to uh, work again. Uh, for the, uh, like, uh, to increase the brain metabolism and the exon outgrowth, uh, we usually inject a patient uh, uh, with uh, granulocyte coronary stimulating factor, GCSF. Uh, there's, uh, there are two uh, uh, pharmacological mechanisms uh, uh, to help neural uh, regenerations by GCSF. One is that GCSF can directly get into the, uh, the nerve, central nerve systems to stimulate neuron and the glial cell uh, metabolism, exon outgrowth. And the other is that GCSF also can uh, stimulate the stem cell uh, in the uh, bone marrow so that uh, they can, uh, uh, can uh, uh, replicate, can mobilize into the peripheral circulation so that uh, there's a tenfold increase uh, in uh, stem cells in the peripheral blood, uh, which may help the patient's uh, damaged brain, damaged central nerve system uh, to be repaired. And uh, sometimes we use this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, herb drugs, uh, PG2, which, uh, is a in, which is the injection drug, can be IV dripped for more than uh, 30 minutes. And uh, this drug can also help the uh, neural metabolism and the re repairs. And for hydrocephalus patients, uh, we perform uh, lumbar drainage test first for two to three days. See whether patients' uh, memory, patients' uh, working ability, and the patient the, uh, patient's symptoms of the frequency of urination in night improved or not. If yes, then we will perform the lumbar peritoneum shunt. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, here, uh, not only for, uh, for this kind of the therapies in the neurosurgical uh, service, we also consult the uh, Chinese uh, medicine doctors, see whether uh, they can help uh, to stimulate patients' uh, uh, neural re uh, regeneration by using acupuncture, Chinese herbs. I think uh, Dr. Ho may, uh, may share with you uh, the, the this uh, combination therapy uh, experience with you around uh, five o'clock here. Yeah. And uh, you, you, uh, also, we will consult the physical therapist uh, to uh, perform the uh, hand and uh, foot uh, physical therapies. Here is the, uh, like the, uh, for the, uh, for this uh, patient's CSF drainage, Parkinson drug, uh, like the uh, GCSF in, uh, injection uh, and the rehab here. Yeah? So we have the, the this is for the walking rehabilitation by uh, 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 robotics. And uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy or, uh, also is one kind of the, the uh, uh, combined therapy for this patient. And the uh, Chinese herb or acupuncture uh, here is the routine, here is the acupuncture. GCSF, uh, I'd like to, uh, to, uh, to uh, mention uh, this uh, drug's uh, mechanism. Uh, after the subcutaneous, subcutaneous injection uh, of the uh, GCSF, uh, which can uh, mo uh, circulate to, uh, like to the brain, to the neural uh, tissue, to uh, pop to enhance the uh, neural uh, metabolism and uh, also uh, neural outgrowth. And also, they, they uh, can reach bone marrow to uh, stimulate CD34 stem cell proliferation and mobilize uh, to the peripheral blood to the central nerve systems. Uh, here's the uh, mechanism. Here, the PG2 here, uh, which uh, the drug Huang Qi. Uh, there's uh, also lots of the, uh, uh, the actions uh, in, uh, in the body, human body, anti-inflammation. Anti uh, here is the, like the, uh, the activation of GCSF and also 
uh, anti-accident, etc. So let's share with you a case, uh, 87, uh, 87 years old, and the, the, the first admission, yeah, has the uh, confused, drowsy, and the unwheel chair with a uh, diaper, has the, uh, has the, the, uh, the KPS 40 means uh, the patient uh, need the totally uh, nursing care or other patient's care. And the MI show that uh, this patient has the dilated ventricle here, and there's a periventricular lucency. Also, some, uh, uh, some amount of the uh, small vessel disease of brain. Here is the throat date. Usually, uh, the, it, it, uh, here, uh, the yellow, yellow color means uh, there's uh, some amount of the uh, uh, disappear of the, uh, throat, the dopamine nerve. So the patient had the uh, a, a modest uh, Decrease in dopamine nerve. Uh, so patient has the uh, has uh, Parkinson, and so we did the uh, the lumbar drainage for this patient. Perform and the uh, symptom improved uh, somewhat. So we perform perform a LP shunt, and then uh, the KPS uh, improved from 40 to 60. 60 means uh, the patient can uh, take care of uh, himself. And also a patient under uh, the uh, gait uh, treatment here yeah, after combining therapy. Before, you only can have the wheelchair bound here, th like the couple of days immediate after the, uh, the therapies. Yeah. Here, uh, the, uh, usually uh, the no more pressure has a surface diagnosis. This uh, another uh, another diagnosis. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the so-called lumbar peritoneum drainage. Here, the drainage test. Uh, we put a small uh, cast uh, in the lumbar region so that the CSF uh, cerebral uh, spinal fluid can be drained uh, drained out into the bag. 60 to 100 uh, cc's uh, per day. See whether there's any uh, improvement of the uh, symptoms. If yes, then we perform the lumbar peritoneum shunt. Uh, and then uh, uh, we encourage patient uh, to uh, perform uh, rehabilitation uh, immediately after the uh, surgery, uh, either in hospital and uh, Usually, uh, they can be discharged one or two days after the surgeries, and uh, they need to, to perform a rehabilitation at home. So we have the horse stands while hands hold in uh, bed rear, uh, balance exercise, walking stride exercise, and uh, they need to perform 100 times in the morning for each, uh, uh, each kind of the exercise. Uh, noon and uh, also at nine. So, so totally uh, almost 900 uh, exercise uh, each day. Another case, uh, 83 years old, and after the combination therapy, uh, this uh, patient needed to, uh, to uh, uh, continue to uh, perform the rehabilitations, and uh, usually two to three months uh, later, uh, he uh, can walk uh, by himself and uh, take care of himself. Uh, he, this case is my father. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, two, two years after, uh, uh, he can write, uh, uh, can, uh, he could uh, write a letter to me, uh, send, uh, told me uh, he needs some medications. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But you see, there's a, uh, uh, no, no address here. Yeah. But the uh, postman still can can uh, send the data to me. Yeah. 
So here is the uh, talk to regain working ability and uh, the uh, respect for chronic wheelchair bound elderly patients through multiple modality approaches. We call this uh, this uh, the uh, the east west combination therapy. Uh, so and uh, some unconscious patients, we need uh, using this kind of the combination therapy. We also can regain patients' uh, consciousness. So uh, here the one of the example, 38 years old, yeah, because of the uh, of the head injury, and uh, yeah, so he become uh, uh, become uh, unconsciousness. No, not not the head injury, the uh, stroke. Yeah? They have the uh, brain stem infarction and uh, a stand up to be pre uh, placed uh, in the patient artery and they become a rely on res respirator, poultry project, a complete bed return. And, and, uh, and uh, this patient now we have the team to help this kind of the unconscious these patients so sent to us we uh, we uh, put the, the another stand bigger stand to uh, to uh, to regain the blood flow of the uh, of her posterior circulation and the star GCSF therapy and also uh, the east or west accommodation ther therapy rehab therapy and uh, you see a uh, couple months later uh, he uh, regained his consciousness and uh, also uh, can talk, can, can move his uh, hand and limbs. Uh, here another one. Case, uh, Miss Young, 85 years old. Uh, because of the uh, because of his unstable gait, uh, uh, he suffered uh, a minor head injury and uh, became. A chronic stroke, uh, chronic subdural uh, hematoma, and uh, uh, has the hemiplegic uh, limbs. Then he uh, at uh, the uh, Kaohsiung Hospital they perform a drainage, but one week later, uh, because of the infections, so he lost of his consciousness and uh, uh, was sent to to us, and we perform perform another, uh, another uh, uh, drainage, also perform the aeropi shunt. And uh, the combination therapies also, uh, also uh, 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 also uh, 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 successfully treat uh, his uh, symptoms, uh, this uh, aeropi shunt. Here, uh, and after that, uh, he, uh, his sons and uh, daughters uh, uh, kept uh, exercise. Like uh, he have done lots of the uh, the the environmental recycle works at the uh, Tsuji uh, uh, place, yeah. the swimming, and the patient here. Yeah, uh, his. His wife here, but the patients uh, uh, help uh, the 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 exercise here. Couple months later, yeah, he regained his uh, ability. So. Eighty-nine years old. <laughs> 89, yeah. He can dance, yeah. yeah his son is the uh, Tsuji members uh, at the Kaohsiung, South Taiwan, and uh, his friend, yeah. So uh, he, he donated uh, lots of the uh, devices to the cardiovascular section, to the neurosurgical section, to the uh, nerve. Uh, nursing uh, department 
to uh, uh, to facilitate facilitate the uh, care of the hospitals uh, hospital patients at Hualien. Yeah. Uh, another, you see, uh, yeah, his sons are so uh, are so respect to his father. Yeah. And we encourage uh, them uh, not only to do uh, uh, hand and neck exercise, they also need to sing songs. And the most of the uh, patients uh, said to me, uh, they, they uh, don't know how to sing the song. But uh, usually I, I ask whether uh, you are a Tsuji member or not. If yes, then uh, everybody uh, know uh, the song. Right? Yeah. Right? I don't know how to sing in, uh, in English. Yeah. Okay, uh, some uh, innovation. Uh, uh, the first in human uh, trial uh, performed in Hualien Tsuji Hospitals. So, first, I'd like to share with you the, uh, the malignant brain tumor. Uh, we have the uh, a new drug uh, trial in uh, in uh, Hualien Tsuji Hospital. The GBM is the I think is the shortest uh, survival time cancer in in the world. Yeah, usually uh, they they died in uh, four months once recurred, like uh, here. Uh, so we we. Uh, uh, find a new drug uh, because the the old fashioned drug here uh, we call this the gradio wafer which uh, contains three point two percent of the BCNU uh, anti cancer drug. Uh, BCNU is is a toxic drug uh, can cause brain swelling, can seizure attack, etc., and uh, can uh, extend patients uh, live for only uh, two months. So uh, almost uh, uh, 20 years ago, we, we, uh, we have a team uh, try to find a, a new drug to, to replace these uh, uh, radio wafers. So uh, 20 years ago, yeah, we found the, this uh, a new compound, BP, which, uh, which is the main composition, chemical composition, Compositions of Tang Gui, yeah, and uh, almost uh, no uh, injury, no toxic to normal cells, including normal brain cell, normal glial cell. So we uh, we made uh, this kind of the uh, BP chemical compounds, uh, 25 percent into a control release form, and perform uh, did the uh, lots of the animal uh, test and uh, uh, found it's, it's uh, very uh, good uh, uh, cytotoxic uh, to the uh, malignant brain tumor effect uh, as compared to the, uh, uh, to the uh, BCNUs. So we, uh, we call this, uh, because uh, 2002, 2003, we uh, fire patterns uh, at the uh, Hualien Tsuji hospitals. Then uh, after that, we uh, turned Almost 15 years later, we uh, uh, got the approval from US FDA and Taiwan FDA uh, to perform a clinical trial at the Taiwan Hualien Tsuji Hospital and the Tri-Service General Hospital. Here is the experience, the uh, external experience of this kind of the uh, cell breakout wafer. Uh, we call this. We also uh, uh, got uh, a lot of the awards uh, for from uh, Taiwan, uh, 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 like the uh, uh, from uh, Taiwan. Uh, we call this National Innovation Awards yeah. uh, because we have the uh, like translate this drug into the clinical uh, uh, applications, clinical trials. I also uh, got the National Academy of Vendor. Uh, for uh, because uh, we we uh, we translate this new drug into uh, treatment of uh, GBM patients. Also, I also uh, uh, we also 
uh, use uh, stem cell to treat chronic stroke patients. So I got the, uh, this uh, award from the uh, NAI. Here, another, another, uh, yeah. another war, yeah, another one, yeah, last year. Yeah. Here, uh, so if the, uh, the patient has the recurrent uh, GBM, then uh, can, be, uh, can be included. In this one, uh, this first case, 43 years old, uh, two years ago, uh, the patient has the, uh, has the GBM uh, perform uh, a surgery at the uh, Huanin Tsuji Hospital, and this time uh, recurred, then uh, we, we, en we enter uh, the, this uh, trial. Uh, the, we perform the surgery to uh, a biopsy, only biopsy, uh, because uh, this time uh, the patient as the tumor size around 2.3 centimeter, so and uh, also uh, affect the patient's walking. So we only perform a biopsy for this patient, and then put the uh, trial drug uh, uh, on the uh, place of the biopsy here using navigation system. The tumor is uh, uh, located uh, was located in the deep brain here. And we perform uh, here, and here, and we perform a biopsy and put a cerebral wafer uh, there. Here, the the first the surgery, and uh, the image, and and here the time the this time, before surgery there's a recurrent recurrent glaucoma here, two point three uh, centimeter, and uh, we perform a biopsy. And this first day, uh, first day after the surgery of biopsy, put the cerebral wafer here, and the three months, six months, eight months, you see there's a disappear of the tumor. But on the other side, at the first, we think this, uh, this may be a scar, but uh, we, we, uh, we did not put any wafer here. But this tumor become uh, larger and larger. So, uh, like uh, this is the self-control, uh, see whether uh, the, uh, the wafer can have the effect to uh, cure the glaucoma or not. And indeed, uh, in, in this first patient, uh, only uh, the, uh, the uh, Sebreka wafer cure the adjacent uh, glaucoma. But for the uh, remote area on the other side, brain area, uh, the, the drug uh, cannot diffuse uh, so, uh, so uh, long distance to kill uh, the tumors. Uh, so uh, the tumors grow in uh, bigger and bigger. So uh, we think this is safe and uh, also uh, effective in, uh, in treating uh, this kind of uh, tumors. Uh, so this occurs, uh, the uh, here is the uh, shredding, uh, also can reduce brain shredding after the, uh, the cell breakout wafer. We check uh, a lot of the uh, uh, tumor genes, see uh, what kind of the, uh, uh, the genotype of the tumor can be effectively uh, saved. And we also culture. Uh, after the remove of the uh, tumor, we uh, put into the tissues to uh, culture, to uh, to uh, capture this kind of the glaucoma patients. The, here, the second day after the surgery, the patient uh, 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 still kept his working ab abilities. Yeah. And uh, now he, he, uh, uh, he, he still survived and uh, uh, almost 14 months after the uh, surgery. Usually, a patient died in, uh, in uh, four months. The case two, uh, 32, uh, yeah, this is another case. Maybe have we, today we may have no time to share with you. Uh, here the, we, we, we remove a, a big, a large piece of the tumors, uh, put in a uh, wafer there, and uh, the tumor tolerant, this kind of therapy very well. Uh, the, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, 
and the tumor, it's 85% belongs to the uh, glioma stem cells. Yeah. And the tumor, another effect of the, of the uh, cell breakout wafer is that uh, uh, this, once put the uh, cell breakout wafer nearby the tumor, the tumor can resensitize to, uh, to the, uh, the chemotherapy agent. Yeah, here, another one, that maybe it's uh, this, uh, the third case. And now we finish uh, six cases. So uh, if, uh, if you are interested in this, we may uh, discuss this uh, after uh, the meeting. Yeah. And, uh, they, here, the third case. Yeah. Uh, the sixth case, another one. And uh, the sixth case now, uh, eight months after the surgery. Uh, it looks uh, pretty happy, uh, his wife. And uh, uh, we also uh, perform uh, 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 lots of the uh, uh, basic studies to see why GBM is so malignancy. Uh, one reason is that uh, GBM uh, can, uh, can secrete exosome. And uh, there's uh, three effects uh, of the exosomes. And the, the exosome here, yeah, he, he, the uh, GBM cells can uh, secrete exosome, and on, on the surface of the exosomes, there's uh, lots of the uh, PDL1 uh, molecules. Like uh, uh, this exosome has the knife, has the gun, uh, they can uh, gun down the uh, police, the man, yeah. so that the, uh, the, this tumor become uh, much more uh, malignancy, and uh, uh, by studying the exosome, we now can uh, produce eight uh, different kinds of antibodies to to uh, knock down uh, the uh, uh, his uh, knife and uh, guns, so that uh, the the police, the the uh, T cell, uh, uh, the uh, nature killing cell, dendritic cell, and the uh, uh, T cells can uh, become uh, uh, stronger and uh, and uh, uh, attack these uh, glioma cells. So uh, uh, maybe in the near future, we uh, can perform the uh, the combination therapy with these new antibodies to uh, solve the glioma uh, patients' uh, problems. So the and the exosome's uh, effect is, is that uh, this exosome also contains some uh, uh, stem cell gene, like the SOX2 genes. So uh, they can make the uh, low uh, malignancy glioma cells into high ma malignancy glioma cells. And also antibody can, uh, can uh, decrease this, this kind of the abilities of the uh, glioma cells. Here, here is the, uh, uh, the uh, maybe basic research here. Uh, no time to share with you about this. And here is the uh, regenerative medicine, five minutes left, okay. So uh, there's uh, lots of the uh, stroke patient, okay, here. And the case, 70 year, uh, 73 years old. Uh, here's a Chinese medicine doctor. Also, our uh, uh, Tsuji uh, commissioners, and uh, uh, he has the uh, complete uh, right limb uh, hemiplegic, hemiplegia, and the, uh, he cannot walk, can, cannot move his right hand and leg for more than three and a half years, no matter how hard. Uh, he tried the uh, rehabilitations. So after, uh, after uh, neurology, rehab, doctor's uh, assessment, then uh, the, the stroke sign. And he entered uh, the, this program. Uh, on the uh, first day, we, uh, the plastic surgeons removed uh, 5 cc uh, of the uh, fat tissues uh, 
through the uh, make a very small wind around umbilical uh, region uh, to uh, get a small amount of the fat out of the uh, the uh, his, his abdomen, yeah, and sent to the corporation called the Goshi Stem Cell uh, Company, and uh, from four weeks later, they uh, culture expand the adipose tissue derived stem cell uh, into uh, 100 million cells uh, and uh, concentrate in one cc. Then under the anesthesia here, make a pearl hole and we directly inject uh, the cells. Here the cell directly inject 100 million cells into uh, the uh, stroke region here and then uh, re uh, assess and rehab uh, at home, yeah. And uh, two two months later, then the, uh, he regained uh, his walking ability. Can stand up, can stand up, uh, sit down, and then uh, stand up and walk uh, again. Yeah. yeah. Now he can uh, sit, uh, sit down. Yeah, and then. Then uh, stood up and then start to walk. Okay. Raise right leg, yeah, raise up his right leg. Walk with a uh, crunch. Here, yeah. another. The, the so we, we usually ask uh, patients to to not only uh, exercise his legs, also need to sing a song. Yeah. You have a song? Qi Dao, prayer. <laughs> okay. The second case, 75 years old, I have a uh, stroke for five years. And then again, uh, imprints a hundred uh, million ADACs under the cornea yeah, into his uh, shock brain the second day here. Yeah. And the third case, 67 years old, it's the Aboriginal uh, lady. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's uh, the improvement. Yeah, oh, okay, one minute. Yeah. We, we, in, in average, we have the around uh, eight point improvement, yeah? And the, the Stanford group, uh, they have the two point improvement in uh, the renal, in, in the Ingram group, uh, two point. Here we have eight point. The peripheral blood stem cell also performed at the Suji Hospital, uh, 3.8 point improvement. So I think uh, 100 million ADSC can uh, make the uh, great improvement uh, in their, uh, of the energy shock scale in these uh, chronic stroke patients. Uh, here's the IPS cells. Uh, in, in our uh, uh, innovation centers, we, we make uh, uh, patients or healthy patients on IPS cells, and we also perform some Alzheimer's disease uh, through the, our patient's IPS cell, throw 10 cc of the blood and put in four genes and uh, make these cells into the in IPS cells and can differentiate into the neural glial cell and uh, we can screen drugs. Uh, one uh, we found here is the, uh, the, the, pet, uh, the Alzheimer's animals you treat with new drug, the animals are very uh, clever. You can find the, uh, the stage immediately. But uh, these are no treatment animals. Uh, they can uh, go on around and around for a long time and uh, want to find the drug. He is one of the uh, ladies, also our Tsuji uh, commissioners, the patient, mother, and uh, he also asked whether his son has the uh, it also has the gene uh, defect, MAPD gene defect, and 
one of his two sons has this kind of the uh, gene defect. And uh, so through uh, uh, these patients' uh, iPS cells, we found uh, one kind of drug uh, very good for, uh, for, for her. Yeah. And this is another uh, device innovation. Uh, the first time uh, we, I, I don't need to put test into the brain, the machine uh, did it for me. Yeah. So this is the complete robotic uh, brain surgery. And now, uh, it's, it's the also as the clinical first in human trial at the Hualien Tsuji hospitals. This is for the potentials. Yeah. So we have the uh, uh, this uh, neuro team in the device innovation team. Another one, uh, new uh, uh, a book, new look. Uh, you can uh, buy it here. Uh, thanks to our master Zheng Yan. Yeah. We have we also have a pemphasis symposium on stem cell cancer research this year, March third to fifth. So welcome you all uh, to attend uh, this uh, uh, symposium. Uh, here's the Taiwan uh, Taiwan uh, export uh, innovation cell transplant. I'm uh, the uh, the co-author of this. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. All right, hope you all enjoyed that interesting talk by Dr. Lin. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> next up we have another speaker, Dr. Shaw Rui Liu. Uh, who is a renowned surgeon and the current chief of the Department of Education and the Joint Center at the Tsuji Daling General Hospital. He also has many research publications related to medical science. Please welcome him to the stage. delighted uh, that I have the chance to introduce my, uh, <coughs> my concept of total management of the, by, for the knee osteoarthritis, and I call it, I call it KHPO. First, I will show you the severe case. You can see the very severe deformity and unsportificate, unstable gait of this lady. Yeah. And this is his, uh, her x-ray. We can show the severe deformity. Uh, before my talk, I will show you some real cases, and they are willing to share their experience of suffering. The first one is a 59 years old female, and suffering from knee pain for years, and she will tell you the common symptom of this common disease. 
，走一走，你就要休息一下，不然就是快要跪下去，这样很不舒服。Osteoarthritis over his right knee. This fifty-year-old pain, I can handle. It's about four years ago. Suddenly, every two or three times, the joint behind the knee will swell up. It's like a pain in the knee. It's going to hold you down. This is before I saw a number of doctors at the hospital. The doctors think this is a joint fracture. In the third case is a 76 years old housewife, also suffering from knee pain for 50 more years. And uh, this is, you can see the terribly deformed knee of both of his, her knee. After one of her knee, the left side, has been repressed by total knee repressment, We can see the significant difference between two legs. I don't have to go. I have to go to the doctor. Don't be scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. But not only aged people suffer from this disease. There are many, many young people have the same problem. Just as the distinguished teacher. 49 years old, suffering from knee pain for five years, and uh, was confined to wheelchairs. And this is her x-ray. We can see very, very mild joint space narrowing. Over here. Uh, I will describe uh, fins. Nothing. 那时候我我完全没有危及意志，啊，但是很快的，哎，奇怪，这个一点点痛怎么持续的存在啊？我就知道不对了，我就开始看医生，看了，结果是他们都鼓励我复健，好，他们说复健看看呐、啊，或者是痛的时候偶尔吃个止痛药啦。This disease is a worldwide big problem. It's a very common impact to the human society. And uh, about one of five people uh, will suffer from this disease. And it is one of the five main causes of disability for population older than 65 years old and decrease the life quality of them. Let us see the prevalence of this disease. In both Western and Eastern world, the prevalence is around 10 to 20 percent in population older than 60 years old. And it is more prevalent in female. If we look at the Google search, there are hundreds of millions of pieces of information. All are talking about the traditional and the men's Men's stream knowledge. The cause is unknown, and the degeneration is ongoing and irreversible. And the damaged cartilage will not regenerate. And this disease could not be cured. And knee replacement will be the final destiny. And before the knee was replaced, all the treatments are conservative, and. Uh, Passive, like painkiller, nutrition supplements such as glucosamine, HA injection, or PRP injection, and sometimes arthroscopic lavage or debridement and osteotomy. So, this is a natural cause. This patient, just two and a half years from here to here, they repressed. So, this is the mainstream medicine. Sometimes complication will happen by the traditional mainstream medicine. Like this patient, he
he was uh, mistreated by Prince Sora eight months after the treatment. The media compartment became collapsed and needs to be repressed. This is other terrible complication. This patient received repeated injection of HA and PRP and got infected. So we should perform two stage operation. Uh, the first one to remove the dead bone and infected tissue and put in the antibiotic teeth, bits. And three months later, put in the very big processes to rescue her knee. If needed, I'm not to perform total knee replacement. Our team could get 97% of satisfactory rate and presently around 300 patients per year receive knee replacement in our center and have very satisfied outcome. For example, like this 67 years old female, just one month after her knee was repressed, she can bend her knee nicely and can do the squatting activity. But the mainstream also priority still have some concerns. The first one is that in current technology, we still could not restore normal physiological function. Patient will always feel a feeling of strange about her processes. And about, according to a recent literature, about 30 to 40 percent of patients having been repressed still suffer from pains or discomforts with unknown origin. And the most importantly, we should make the patient realize that this is a path of no return. If the knee once being repressed, uh, the patient burned the bridge behind him her or him. And occasionally, there is still some severe complications, such as infection or wearing of the prosthesis. Like this patient, after three years of successful replacement, he still got infection and needs two-stage revision. For aged people, it's uh, suffering. And uh, this is a case of wearing of the prosthesis. You can see, uh, and you need. <laughs> Maybe I can unfit with the microphone. This poor lady came to me after seven surgeries due to infected processes. And I cut all the infected bone and used a very huge custom made Every time when I meet these complicated cases, and I will think why the knee regener degenerates. Why the de knee degenerates? In the mainstream medicine, this is still an unsolved problem because the etiology is still not clear. So we cannot prevent it. We cannot treat it effectively and we cannot cure it. Let us see the voyage of life. Everyone is born very cute and lead a very happy childhood. But why, when you get old, we have very, very different, like the green one,
curve and the red curve. So why the new degenerated? When we see the patient, it's always in its uh, disability stage. What happened in the early stage? For example, in our middle life, we are all busy for our, bu our career and family. And what happened here? So if I, I think if we, sh if we want to know the cause of the degeneration, we should look into this earlier stage. For century, from left to right is a dream outcome of researchers and all the medical personnel. I will tell you that this is one of my patients. Just one year after I, uh, uh, just one year after he received KHBO treatment. So, from now on, I'm going to talk about the KHPO, the total solution of this uh, common disease. About 20 years ago, I find an accidental finding in a oscilloscopic examination made me met a hypothesis. And then, after 15 years of translational research, I published 12 papers and one book chapter. They all conceptualize one novel but very simple concept. By using this concept, I designed three very variable strategy, and I call it the knee health promotion option for the comprehensive treatment of knee osteoarthritis. The Chinese uh, philosopher says that misfortunes often lie concealed in trifles and burst forth when least expected. And the trifle here, I call it the hidden killer, is the media pricker. Almost everybody was born with this structure in, in his knee. Yeah. It's a fold of the synovial membrane. The left side is the young one, and the right side is the old one. And the media breaker will cause a very important phenomenon. I call it media abrasion phenomenon. And this is the arthroscopic view. We can, call, we can see the pathologic media breaker uh, at the repeated abrasion on the knee. And this is a gross view when we perform arthroscopy and see the thickened media breaker abrased the bone, the cartridge beneath it. And the uh, abrasion phenomenon will cause cartridge damage over the media side of the patellar femoral joint. This is a mild one. And for more severe one, we can see over here. All are caused by the media preca, uh, cause the abrasion of the underlying cartridge. And I also found that the size of the preca affect the the damage of the cartridge. For a smaller one, less damage. A larger one causes more severe damage. So all of these are indirect finding. Yeah. From this picture, we can see here is the, the site of abrasion. And here is the location which represent the narrowing of the X-ray examination. And it's a pity that all the researcher and clinician focus on here and not here. So this side is ignored. From this picture, we also have a very interesting finding over here. We can see the same patient, the same age, so different. Here, the cartridge completely healthy. So this picture improved the mainstream medicine, saying that the osteoarthritis of the knee is due to aging. Yeah. Because the same age, why we have this different? 
So it must be the local condition cause the damage of the cartilage. So what is the relationship of the primary lesion and the second lesion? This is, I want to prove it. So I organized a research team in 2002. And we conducted many projects to look into such interested subjects. And this is uh, the papers we published here now, and the book chapter. Uh, all of this is conceptualized into this finite element model. The repeated abrasion occur average one million times per year. And it will cause local physical abrasion. This is our f study. We, we find that uh, in the middle age people, the Young's module is about 60. And we put in this data and, co and find that if we bend our knee, exceeds 60 degree, the pressure of the breaker will cause damaging local pressure uh, larger than 10 megapascal. And the second one is the spreca itself. After repeated impingement and inflammation, it will secrete cartridge damaging enzyme. So we take out the synovium and do some immunohistological study and found that there are high concentration of interleukin-1, beta, and uh, MMP3. So this proof that the chemical erosion can uh, damage the focal cartridge of the media compartment. So both of the physical abrasion and the chemical erosion will damage the media side of the knee joint. And the cartridge debris will accumulate over here and cause third party abrasion. So the three factor <coughs> result in the continual apoptosis and degradation of the matrix of the cartilage. So this is the very, very simple concept. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe everyone now, you will feel discomfort over your media side of the knee. Yeah. To let you be more impressed, I will share you the inspiration from water I got in 2002 when I have a family trip around the Icefield Parkway after my uh, conference in Toronto. Yeah. Along the Icefield Parkway, I see a lot of magnificent manifestation of water. When it comes down, it just looked like a mirror, like the Lake Louis. And it, its power can separate the mountain. But usually, they just carved a very graceful canyon like this one. This is Johnston Canyon. Yeah. And by the water side of the canyon, I see a plate standing silently there. Immediately, the, I found a poem uh, printed in it and it startled me very much. Let me read it for you, the canyon. There is hardly any sky here. The air is cool and full of the sound of water. Everything is water and rock. Water carrying rock, breaking rock, water carrying rock away. How about making some modification? The knee. There is hardly any sky here. The air is cool and full of the sound of media abrasion. Everything is media breaker and cartridge. Media breaker, carving cartridge. Media breaker, breaking cartridge. And carrying cartridge away. Yeah. And the foreign par paragraph are more fascinating. It is talking about the result of the abrasion. Yeah. So the shapes you will see in this canyon are always changing. The rock dictates where the creek will run. 
But the water decides what rock will stay or go, and whether it will go now or later. And this is the modification. The shapes you will see in the knee are always changing. Cartridge detects what the knee looks like. But media pre-car decides which cartridge will stay or go, and whether it will go now or later. Yeah. So this point do encourage me to continue my research at that time. For summary, let us see this simulation of physical abrasion the media precar become more and more thick as your age become older and cause me the focal abrasion. Yeah. And the particle will accumulate in the media compartment. And the um, chemical erosion happen in the media, the precar site. The precar being impinged and inflamed repeatedly and I think the chemical erosion is more powerful than the physical abrasion. Yeah. So in the traditional medicine, only 10% of knee osteoarthritis are, have clear causes, mainly because of trauma, such as a meniscus tear, osteopetial injury, and so on. But other 90% are regarded as degeneration just because the cause is still unknown. Our finding of media abrasion phenomenon, we found that it's a count on 95% of the above 90% of unknown origin. Okay. So we can put the media abrasion phenomenon over here and it will explain why some people will degenerate, some people will not. <coughs> this is a life cycle of the knee related to media abrasion phenomenon. Let me first put in the stage of the degeneration. This is a normal knee, we can see from the oscilloscopic finding, the cartridge surface is very smooth and white, so it's normal. And this one, the space of the X-ray is still normal, but by arthroscopic examination, the surface is uneven, and sometimes we're bubbling. So this is stage one. This is stage two, degeneration. We can see some narrowing of the space. And by arthroscopic finding, we can see some fissuring or bubbling of the cartridge. And the stage three osteoarthritis, besides narrowing of joint space, we could see some spur over here. And the arthroscopic finding, we will find the fissuring and the crab meat-like material over here. And finally, the severe stage four osteoarthritis, the arthroscopic finding is like this. The bone is exposed, the yellow part. So the horizontal axis represent the age, and the vertical axis represent the frequency and severity of uh, the media abrasion phenomenon. For the life cycle of the healthy knee, and the green curve, if we, when in our middle age, the bending of our knee is less severe, it will go along the green line. And this is a degenerative knee. It means that if you bend your knee more frequently and harder, you will shift to the red line. The other factors make the green line to red line has been well documented by traditional medicine. It's talking about the risk factor of knee osteoarthritis. There's this female and the lifestyle, labor, and harmful exercise, obesity, and so on. But 
the traditional medicine do not know why. Now, if we put in the media abrasion phenomenon here, suddenly we could explain why female is more preference. So you just think about the uh, daily activity of female people, uh, more frequent knee bending. Okay. So what is our solution according to this theory? We have three variable strategy to deal with the uh, uh, whole, whole cause of this disease. In the susceptibility stage and the preclinical pre stage, we use smart knee care to teach the people or patient how to take care of, of their knee according to the concept of abrasion phenomenon. And uh, in the clinical stage, we use an arthroscopic surgery to treat the cause. And for the disability stage, we use precision arthroplasty. Uh, that means besides arthroplasty, the traditional one, we will also treat the media abrasion phenomenon. Okay. First, I will talk about the small knee care. I have right. I have wrote two Chinese books and one English book <coughs> to teach people how to take care of their knee. And this might met 50% of the people uh, can uh, go reverse, reverse the natural cause of the red line. <coughs> and uh, for the clinical stage, usually stage two and three, uh, osteoarthritis, I designed a, a, an arthroscopic surgery to treat the cause, and it will rescue about 80% of patients uh, and, and reverse their natural cause of degeneration. And what is ACRFP? It is an integrated arthroscopic surgery. After thorough arthroscopic examination, the surgical procedure will be decided and include the most important one is the media release and later release chondroplasty, removal of cartilage debris if needed. The surgical objection is to eliminate all detrimental factors and to improve the general environment of the knee for cartilage regeneration. Let me show you the key technique of media release. We can see the abrasion over here and the very tight of the patella and the femur. The first stage in the tiny space, we do very carefully to remove the distal part of the media preca. This technique is technical demanding, so not ordinary orthopedic surgeon could do this surgery, okay? And uh, secondary, we remove the proximal part of the middle breaker. It's just like the membrane under the shell of an, of an egg, very, very thin. So we take it very carefully to remove them all. And finally, we do the adjustment of the pressure between cartilage by using small scissors. And, and this is the most important part of this operation. If you do over, patient will be very uncomfortable. But if you do less, uh, the, the symptom will come back very quickly. So we can see after surgery, the abrasion phenomenon has been removed and the cartridge, the space between the cartridge is open. So we release the persistent pressure between cartridge and this is very good for cartridge regeneration. And uh, finally, if uh, the patient's condition is going to the disability stage, we will do the precision arthroplasty for patient. Uh, 
And because we have checked out the cause of the pain, the mediabration phenomenon, so almost 1% of our patients are satisfied and do not have the unknown cause of pain and discomfort comfort after arthroplasty. And this is uh, our joint outpatient clinic. Yeah, we recruit family doctors. Uh, our vice superintendent, Dr. Lin, is over here. Yeah. And geriatrician, rheumatologist, physical therapist to join and do, uh, to combine care for the patient. And this is our protocol. First of all, we will do, uh, we will recommend the smart knee care for half a year for every patient. Some will improve and don't need to receive surgery. And if the condition get worse or no improve, we will suggest the arthroscopic, arthroscopic surgery. And uh, thereafter, we follow up patient yearly and if no improve or become worse, then we will recommend arthroplasty, including uni compartment or total knee. And this is the treatment guidelines. For stage one patients, uh, we recommend smart knee care. For stage two and three, the ACRFP is recommended. And three, four, stage four, the arthroplasty and stage five arthroplasty, the total knee replacement. Okay. Steve Jobs once said, simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple. So I compare the mainstream medicine to our KHPO uh, option. For the mainstream medicine, because they don't know the cause, so all the treatment are passive, and it will waste time and uh, waste money, and the knee osteoarthritis progress and hinder. And about 30 percent will finally need mainstream orthoplasty, and 30 percent of them of them are unhappy about the results. And how about the KHPO? Because we know the cause, so we treat it actively. By smart knee care, we can save more than 50% of patients. And if it fail, we use arthroscopic, the minimal invasive surgery. We could save another 80% another of patients. So only 5% of our patients needs precision arthroplasty. And this arthroplasty will get nearly 100% happy patients. So finally, let us uh, see the outcome. Uh, during the one year period, I treat 469 cases. Uh, totally 861 knees. And we follow up uh, more than three years the follow-up rate exceeds 90%. The female to male ratio is five to one, and the age, mean age is 69 years old. And we think the total satisfactory rate is about 93%. For the SERFP, it's 91%. The osteoplasty, nearly 100%. The subjective outcome of case score who are statistically improved. And the sub-scale of course is the scores. All are improved statistically. And the X-ray outcome of ACRFP found that 81% uh, of, uh, of reverse natural cause. Now I show you some evidence of cartilage regeneration. And this patient received ACRFP and just uh, three and a half years old, a year later, we could see the defect was feared by healthy cartilage. And this is another case. One year after surgery, we could see the 
rip open of the knee joint. And this is another case, very severe deformity. And three years thereafter, we can see the improvement of the cartilage. And we have some, we have many self-control cases. This one, he received operation over this side and no operation over here. And uh, six, six years later, we can see the ACRF side, no symptom. Patient was very happy, but this side become more and more severe. So it's a very good self-control. And this is another one. The same, the right side received operation, left side, no. And after three years, we can see no change, reverse natural course over right side. But the left side become more severe and deformed, and he need knee replaced. How about the long-term follow-up? This one is uh, eight years after. We can see the cartridge become very, very healthy. And the, hap the patient is very happy about the results. And this is a case of 10 years. Also, the narrowing space become more large and opened. This is the case we rescue at an undegenerated knee. And here is one year of before, before surgery. And here is the just before surgery. We can see just one year the cartilage deteriorated to this degree. And we perform ACRFP for him. And five years later, we can see the reopen of the joint space. Yeah. We also do some research about the MRI examination. And this is an example of cartilage regeneration proved by MRI study. Before surgery, we can see a cartilage defect over here. And one year after, the cartilage regrows over here. And I also have a chance to do the second row arthroscopy. Uh, this is uh, when I do the ACRFP for this lady. Three years later, she fell down and have uh, got the hemoarthrosis. And I have the chance to do the second row arthroscopy and found that the defect over here was nicely regrowth. Okay, uh, finally, let's uh, see the cases, the case results. The upper one is the pre-op X-ray. And uh, here is the post op We can see the reopen of the joint space. And this is the second case. 至于说后面会抽筋，我最痛苦、最严重的地方哈，现在一年多一次都没有发生，都非常满意。目前的情况，我打球可以打两三天，打一次球，打网球啊，打一两个钟头都没有问题。打高尔夫球打一两个钟头
，很忙碌，但是很充实，很快乐。Okay, in conclusion, the catch bill bring new hope for people because an important etiology factor has been found. That is the media abrasion phenomenon. And it could be treated by minimal invasive procedure. And we believe that the cartilage could regenerate if uh, the in a favorable environment, if we can remove all the detrimental factors in the knee, okay? So, we turn the degeneration condition into a treatable disease. This is very important because we know the cause. So, uh, since it is a disease, we should prevent it. We can prevent it. And if, if treated in time, we believe that the gener degeneration process could be reversed. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank mm -hmm. you.